alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to our series I Remember Umm al -Banin. a series dedicated to remember Umm al -Banin and what this woman stood up for. I'd like to start off first and foremost to send my condolences to the Imam of our time, may Allah hasten his reappearance, and to you all for the death anniversary of Umm al -Banin, salam. I'd like to welcome with us today Dua Maqzumi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi Sister Dua, who was Umm al Banin? Umm al Banin, alayhi salam, she is uh, the glorious mother of Al Abbas. Uh, her name was Fatima, the daughter of Huzam. Uh, her father, Huzam, was the most renowned personalities of the Arabs and the Shaif of his people. The ancestors of this great lady, Umm al Banin, are well known for their horsemanship, heroism, bravery, and courage. When Imam Ali, alayhi salam, he lost his beloved wife, Fatima al Zahra the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Alayhi he summoned his brother Aqil, who is a well-known genealogist, and uh, to ask for him to search for him a lady who is a being of a descendant of heroes, in order for him to get a son who would be immaculate, brave, and a hero like Al Abbas alayhi salam. And Aqil told him, لا أرى لك إلا فاطمة بتحزام. I do not find anyone suitable for you other than Fatima, the daughter of Huzam. So they went to propose to Umm al -Banin. And before even Umm al -Banin was born, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose her to be the wife of Ali, to take this mission. Uh, Huzam, her father, Ibn Khalid, he was once on a trip with his family and friends and relatives. Um, and this is a very nice story. Uh, he said that once when he was on the trip, he was sleeping and he saw in his dream that he was in a dry desert segregated from his relatives and friends and in his hand he was holding a diamond he was twisting it with his fingers and he was amused in its beauty suddenly a man on a horse comes towards him and greeted him and asked him how much will you sell this diamond Huzam said I don't know how much it's worth how much will you buy it the man also said I don't know how much it's worth but I advise you to gift it to a prince who is more valuable than money and gold. Hazam said, will you, will you guarantee all this to me? He said, yes, and you will be favored to him. You will have the nobleness and the honor for the rest of your life. Give it to me. And he gave it to him. Now when Hazam woke up from his dream, he mentioned what he had seen in front of his family and friends and relatives. One of them told him, Hazam, if your dream will come true, then Allah will bless you with a girl where a great glorious man will marry her and you will be honored, you will be favored to him and you will have the nobleness for the rest of your life. And when Huzam came back from his trip, his wife Thumama bin Suhaid was giving birth at that time and she gave birth to a girl. When they congratulated him and told him, Huzam, you, you have a girl now, congratulations. He said, لَقَدْ صَدَقَتْ رُؤْيَاي My dream has become true. And they asked him, what would you name her? He said, no better name other than the name Fatima. وَكَنُّوهَا بِأُمُّ الْبَنِينَ Give her a nickname, Umm al -Banin. And it was a usual thing in the Arab time. When a child was born, they would give him or her a name and a nickname. So for example, you'd have Al-Hasan alayhi salam, his nickname, Al-Mushtaba. You'd have al Hussein, his nickname was Aba Abdullah. You'd have someone like Al-Abbas, he'd have a nickname, Qamar Bani Hashim. So it was a usual thing. And there are several reasons why he gave her this nickname. One of them due to her aunt Layla. Uh, she was also brave. Uh, she had a great personality. And at the same time, she also had four sons or three sons, I recall. And her father took that nickname from her aunt's name and he gave it to her. Along that, Umm al Banin salam, had four sons. Her elder son was Al Abbas. And her young son was Ja'far. And in between was Abdullah and Uthman. So she's the mother of the sons, Umm al Banin. And this great lady, she uh, raised her four sons on how to, um, how to respect the two Imams from a different mother, their brother from a different mother. Even one day she told Al Abbas alayhi salam, O oh son Abbas, when you sit in front of your brother Hussein, do not sit with him as if you are sitting in front of your brother. Sit with him as if you are sitting in front of your master. Yes, you are the son of Ali. But don't forget that his mother is Fatima al Zahra. Which fellow wife is so sincere to her stepsons as much as Umm al Bani was? 
Alayhi that salam, was, that was beautifully said. And you spoke about some of the qualities Umm al-Banin stood up for, being Umm al-Banin, for example, the mother of the sons. Um, do you have anything other than her title? What else did she stand up for? She stood up for uh, Fatima al-Zahra. She stood for Imam Ali alayhi salam. She stood for al Hussein. She stood for Zainab. She even stood for the sake of Allah. Now let's talk about her standing for Fatima al-Zahra because if you look at it, she stood for Fatima al-Zahra in so many different ways. Uh, one of them, she took care of her orphans, Hassan, Hussein, Zainab, and Umm Kalthum. She was so sincere for, with them that she did not deny them anything. And she was so sincere with them. Even that when she was newly married and Ali ibn Abi Talib called her Fatima by her first name. She told him, oh Ali, do not call me by my name Fatima. He said to her, why? This is the name that I love. I love this name. She said to him, oh Ali, I am afraid that if you call me by my name Fatima, Hassan, Hussein, Zainab, and Umm Kalthum will recall and remember their mother's name. And in that case, I'll put some sorrow and pain in your orphan's heart, your children's heart. Uh, she stood for Fatima to Zahra when she took care of her, her children. She stood for Fatima to Zahra when she sacrificed four of her sons for the sake of one of her sons. Imagine that. Uh, she stood for Fatima to Zahra alayhi uh, salam even when Al Abbas alayhi salam was departing to Karbala with his brother, Al Imam Hussein. She told him, Oh Abbas, I have one word with you. He came to her, Oh yes, mother, what do you want? She said to him, Don't embarrass me in front of Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. Uh, sacrifice yourself for Hussein because it is known that on the day of judgment each mother that sacrificed her son for Fatima to Zahra's son she would come in front in front of Fatima to Zahra's presence and would tell her oh Fatima I sacrificed my son for you so Umm al Bani alayhi salam did not want to be the mother with four sons and she did not sacrifice them all she even told Al Abbas make sure that your brothers sacrifice themselves for Hussein and it is known in Karbala, Al Abbas was the last one from his brothers to be martyred. He told them, his, his brothers, Tfadlu ya awlad ummi, come in front. He wanted to make sure that each and one of them would mar be a martyr them for the sake of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. And he was the last one to make his mom's message and will come true. He did not want to embarrass her. So Umm, umm Al Bani, she stood for Fatima al Zahra in so many ways. Uh, she stood for Imam Ali for being his wife, for taking care of his children, Good for raising so. yes, and yeah. for raising uh, him children like Al Abbas alayhi uh, salam. She stood for Imam Al Hussein when she sacrificed her sons for him, when she took care of him. Uh, she stood for Zainab alayhi salam when they came back from the martyrdoms of Hussein and they had to mourn and cry and they were together. Uh, she stood for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because she sacrificed for Allah's sake. She sacrificed. Imam Hussein was battling for Islam, for the teachings, for humanity, uh, for Allah's teachings to remain. And since Umm al-Bani sacrificed her sons for that sake, she stood for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, so she stood for many reasons. She, she did yeah. indeed, especially when she looked up to Imam Hussein. Despite having the full, the full, her blood son, um, yeah. her blood son being blood she, son. she treated Imam Hussein alayhi salam more than she would treat her sons, and she mm -hmm. took care of him and Al Hassan alayhi salam and, and Imam Ali's children more than she took care of her sons, and she loved them the most, and she was very sincere. Exactly. To them. Is that the only? Is it only because they were the daughter, they were the sons, sorry, of uh, Fatima al Zahra, or was there other reasons? to it. Umm al Bani, she comes from a family of nobleness and uh, she was very humble. Uh, she's known to come from a respective family. So it's not just because they were the sons of Fatima al Zahra, but that, yes, is made the main reason. Definitely. Uh, because imagine people at that time did not even respect the orphans of Fatima al Zahra. They did not respect Fatima al Zahra herself. Uh, Umm al Bani, she knew their state and their eyes in Allah in Allah's eyes. She knew who they were. She knew who that she was the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him. And if you were a true Muslim, you would not hurt that family. You would not hurt Fatima al Zahra, even if she was uh, a martyrdom and she was not present in that time. You still won't, don't want to hurt her by mistreating her children. At the same time, she's the wife of Ali. You know how could she uh, not take care and not have the sincere and the loyalty that she had? Uh, and don't forget the family she comes from. They were known for their nobleness, their courage, their bravery. Um, 
So it's not just because they are the children of Fatima al Zahra, she took care of them, but also she knew that they were hurt, they were broken, they lost their mother. Uh, that was also taken in, con in consideration. Very empathetic indeed, yes. And what did Umm al Benin endure? I know she endured um, you know, the loss of her four sons, um, but what else did she endure during her life? Most of all was the loss of her four sons, and on top of that, and the worst of all, was the most horrific news that she received, uh, the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says that uh, Umm al banin he has narrated that she used to go to the cemetery of Al-Baqi'ah. She used to lament with heart-rending and strict and grief words upon the loss of her four sons and Imam al Hussein. She would mourn, she would sob, she would cry, she would have poems that she would mention and read. And ladies that would hear her would gather around her, they would all cry together. She, she transformed Jannat al-Baqi' into like a Husseiniya. And she was the first lady known to read Majlis al Hussein for Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Uh, because she was enduring a lot and she was suffering a lot from their loss. Uh, even Marwan ibn al Hakam. Marwan ibn al Hakam is known to be a man who made Ahl al Bayt alayhi salatu salam suffer in so many different ways. He would pass by and he would hear Umm al Banin's words and moaning and crying and sobbing and he would say, Rahimallah Umm al Banin. Rahimallah Umm al Banin. God bless Umm al Banin. God bless Umm al Banin. She would even break his heart. So she did endure a lot because on 13th Jamadi Thani, Umm al Banin, 64 after Hijrah, she passed away. Karbala and the tragedy of Karbala and the loss of her four sons and Hussein alayhi salam, her master, was 61 after Hijrah. So imagine two years. After the tragedy of Karbala, Umm al Banin passed away. She did not last any longer. She could not endure any more sufferings. Uh, and this is why we remember her. We remember her mission in life. We remember what she sacrificed for her four sons. We remember her because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a great position for this lady, Umm al Banin, uh, because she, she sacrificed for his sake also. Uh, imagine many of us have tried ourselves that we have problems that they are so hard to be solved and no mm -hmm. one else can help us through this problem and we don't know what to do so at one minute we just read Fatha for Umm al and many of us have tried it yeah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the sake of Umm al and because of the mission that she had in life that she completed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make our problem solved. And many of us have tried it, yeah. that we get into a point where like, okay, Fatha for al Bani, let's see how this goes. With anything, to be honest, with finding a parking, I know it always works yeah. with finding a parking, for example. Yeah, London with people, anything, they always yeah, do that because exactly. they suffer Fatha from parking. With, uh, for Umm al Bani, and subhanAllah. Because yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows how much He gave to him. So He gave, he gave her something yeah. that when we ask for Allah for the sake of Umm al Bani, help us, He will he will like solve our problems yeah. uh, because she has a great uh, position in Allah's eyes. And how important is it? You mentioned they do, they, they mention Umm al quite a lot. And I know they do, you know, um, gatherings and they Sufrat do Umm al-Banin. Um, Sufrat Umm al mm -hmm. um, How important is it to hold, you know, the Sufra and what, what is the meaning behind it? Is it just a gathering a few, few ladies and remembering Umm al or is there, is there like a ritual way of because she has a great position in Allah's eyes, and when we make a sufra for Umm al-Banin, uh, we do dua, we do uh, mention her, mm. ziyara, uh, we do um, remember her uh, mission in life, like we make a small majlis, yeah. um, and we read fatihat for Umm al-Banin, and the food that we have, the sufra that we have, is, uh, is, is all like for Umm al-Banin alayhi salam, and like to remember her, and because we are remembering her, you know, and we're making the sufra for her because she has a great position in Allah's eyes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will see us gathering all together for the sake of Umm al-Baneen, remembering this great lady. So uh, he will give us our hawa'ij, our questions, what we've asked for and what we want. Uh, it, it is very like uh, nice to r do that regularly because we all have uh, dua, supplications Hi and job. things we need. And uh, usually the hard 
and like the hard stuff that we really don't get like the most complicated problems that are hard to solve it's like a key with Umm al -Banin. you just make a sufra for her or you remember her you make a majlis for her you read a fatha for her and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will open the doors for you for the sake of this lady because she was a great lady she sacrificed her sons imagine no mother would do that uh, would humbly sacrifice her sons one, for the sake two, of Allah yeah. Yeah. one two let alone four um, if you lose so one it's, it's, it's horrible quite hard how yeah. about four indeed now we know Umm al-Banin was a magnificent lady of patience and um, she held such a powerful kind of quality of patience right mm -hmm. um, how did she show patience was it just through just through sending her four um, sons and knowing they might be martyrs for the sake of Imam al-Hussein or how did she show patience in Umm al-Banin al -Salam, uh, she showed patience uh, for the loss of her four sons because she never asked about them when Bishr ibn Hadlan came to mention that they are martyrs. Uh, the only thing that gave Umm al-Banin patience was Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam because she had love for him. Uh, she did not want to lose him. So what gave her this patience was Imam al-Hussein. She had no patience for Imam al-Hussein. If you come to see what Imam Zayn al Abidin came back from uh, Karbala to Medina and he told Bishr, go send a message that Hussein has been martyred. Because people had uh, brothers, they had husbands that were, went with Imam Hussein in Karbala and they wanted to know what happened to Imam Hussein. They wanted to know what happened to their husbands, to their brothers. So Imam Zayn al Abidin said to Bishr, you go tell the news, spread the news near the grave of Rasulullah. And Bishr went and he said, Ya Ahle Yathrib, Allah maqam alakum biha. O people of Yathrib, you do not stand in Yathrib. People told him, O oh Bishr, what are you saying? This is the city of Rasulullah. How are you saying that? He said, The news is near the grave of Rasulullah. So every lady was out from her home. Every child was out from their home. No one remained at home. They were all, they all run, ran to the grave of Rasulullah to know what's the news. Uh, Bishr was yelling to everyone, O oh, people of Yathrib, Qutil al Hussein. Hussein has been martyred. Al Jismu minhu bi Karbala mudarrajun. His body is slaughtered and thrown on the field of Karbala. Wal Rasu minhu ala al Qanat yudaru. And his head is on a spirit taken from one city to another. Fa'admu'i midraru. So shed your tears. Bishr says, All I see, I've been screaming and yelling, Qutil al Hussein. All I see is a lady running and she trips and she gets up again and she runs and she trips until she got into the middle of the crowd. She told me, oh Bishr, tell me about Hussein. He said, I was shocked. I've been yelling, Hussein has been martyred. Look at her, how she had no patience for the loss of Hussein. She had patience for losing her sons. She never asked about them. So he said, I've been yelling, Hussein has been martyred. They told him, oh Bishr, be easy on her. This is Umm al-Banin. She lost four of her sons in Karbala. Bishr said, when I knew that this was Umm al-Banin, I wanted to condolence with her on the loss of her four sons. So I told her, my condolences for you on Ja'far, Uthman, and Abdullah. She did not fall. She did not scream. She did not yell. She told him, tell me about Hussein. He said, my condolences for you on your three sons. She said, yes, they sacrificed themselves for Hussein. She had this patience to stand. Which mother would hear such a news and would not at least yell and cry and then ask about Hussein? But she had patience because she never had patience for Hussein. And you can tell when someone doesn't have patience, that person would keep repeating the question over and over again. And he would tell them, can you have some patience? Umm al Bani showed that she didn't have patience for Imam Hussein because she kept repeating, Tell me about Hussein, tell me about Hussein. And he said, She did not fall for the loss of her three sons. Maybe she'd fall when she hears that Al Abbas had been martyred. So he told her, My condolences for you on the loss of Abbas. Over here, the narrator said that Umm al Bani was holding the, her grandson, the son of Abu al Fadl al Abbas, and he fell from his grandmother's hand. Here, Umm al-Banin fell on her knees and, and she said, Oh, Bishr, tell me about Hussein. When he told her about Imam al-Hussein, that's when she screamed, she yelled, she hurt her head, and she went to Zainab alayhi salam. So, by just looking at the scene that we just mentioned, uh, she had patience to lose her sons, 
but the, she had no patience to lose Imam Hussein. So what is the reason that this mother, like Umm al banin have patience along losing her sons? Behind it was because she had zero patience for losing Imam Hussein alayhi And she did mourn, she did remember them, she did cry. Of course. Uh, uh, it was hard for her to lose them. But what gave her patience and how she showed patience? Because she didn't want to lose Imam Hussein alayhi salam. SubhanAllah. Indeed, what you've mentioned about being um, patient and I wonder what is patience? I know Umm al showed patience. What is it to be patient and how is it to be patient? I know people define patience in just waiting maybe or is it more to it? Is it taking action and where are we rewarded when we are patient in this day and age and how can we relate to Umm al -Banin? Uh, being patient is when you know that this problem you are suffering from is temporary. You will be out from this problem one day or from what you are suffering from. Uh, for example, when we lose a loved one and we have to be patient, uh, we have to move on in life. Yes, we would cry a day or two, a month or two, a year or two. But at the end of the day, uh, what makes you patient is that life moves on. You're going to have to start back going back to eating uh, if you lost your appetite at first. You would get yourself busy, you'd go through community, you'd pray, you'd uh, teach, you'd go learn something. Life would move on. Um, so it's a usual thing that uh, when you lose someone or you are suffering from something, uh, what gives you patience is that life moves on in daily life. So you might have like a depression moment. Uh, it might take you a year or two, it might take you a month or two. Mm. Um, you might be losing your appetite for a while, but you will come back to it, like it won't stay. Um, when you have patience, you don't like sa uh, commit suicide, for example. People who don't have patience. Or self-harm themselves They harm well. themselves. Yeah. They commit suicide. Yeah. And as a believer and a Muslim, we, we're all learned to have some patience because we cannot get rid of our lives for the sake of something that happened. We know like al-mawt haqq, it's the right. Mm. Um, and it's one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rights that we give it to him. You know, he created us and he takes us whenever it's time. So us as believers, we know that and we have patience for that. Yes, we do cry, we mourn, we take it out because we're human beings. We can't keep it inside us. Even if it wasn't a loss of anyone, even if it was just a problem we're suffering from, um, we could be patient by not committing suicide or not harming ourselves. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we would cry, we would take it out. We, every time we, we would remember, we would like cry and mourn and uh, take it out. Sometimes we'd be in our small depression area where we just want to be alone. And then and what, so while, you, while you being yeah. patient, it comes out and you move on to your da daily lifestyles. Just like those mothers who lost the, their sons, you yeah. know, they do cry a month or two and they move on. But Umm al-Bani was different because uh, the Prophet Muhammad peace of blessings be upon him, he says, the hearts, In the hearts of the believer, the martyrdom of Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, there was a burn that will never be healed. And Umm al-Bani showed that burn that was never healed. And I, as I said previously, she did not last after the tragedy of Karbala only two years because she could not inhale any more sufferings, any more loss. And, and she can't be any more patient. Yeah, and Zainab, السلام, she lived one year after the tragedy of Karbala, imagine. Because she loved Imam Hussein so much. So, Indeed, a patient woman, indeed a woman of knowledge and wisdom. A woman we can all learn from, be it men or, or women. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dua Maqzumi. You're welcome. Stay tuned for our next part of the segment um, with Fahima Muhammadi on a one-to-one -one coaching session. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Thank you, sister, for being here today. We're going to be discussing in this session the loss of your son. I'd like to start firstly by you telling me what was life like living in Iraq in the time of Saddam? It was awful. I can't even begin to tell you how 
awful it was. Saddam and his men were just pure evil. I swear by Allah, they didn't have a shred of mercy within them. We had no freedom of speech. It was like there was flies on the wall. Every day was tense. Every day was just hard to live. Could you explain the difficulty and the hardships of the actual daily living a little bit more? I know of women that were raped by officers in front of their families. Children were tortured. We don't even call him Saddam Hussein. He doesn't deserve to have that name. It makes me sick just thinking about it. Children, children couldn't go out and play. They were tortured in front of their parents. But that wasn't the worst. People had been hung from their hands. people's bones, burn them, and throw acid on them. How had this impacted you in particular with your family situation? I tried to keep my family safe. Every move, every every day, I'd, I'd be in fear of, of going out, of leaving my house. I dread to think how many people have been tortured. <laughs> What was your coping mechanism to get you through each day? I'd pray every day. I'd pray to Allah. And Amal Bali Benin. She helped me overcome the tragedy. It was my son, actually, that reminded me of this figure. <laughs> So speaking about your son, could you describe to me the relationship that you had with your son and how did you lose him? My son was... My son was killed. My, my son was killed by, by Saddam. <laughs> but I, I can't tell you how proud I am of my son. <laughs> my blessed, beautiful boy. <laughs> my son was everything. <laughs> he worked so hard every day. What was your relationship with him? I had a very close relationship with my son. He was such a good boy. When he would do something wrong, I would say to him, do not do that, because our master Hussein is watching. And instantly, he would stop. <laughs> when I think back to times with my son, I always think of that moment. <laughs> because it reminds me of how I look up to figures that help me try and stay positive every day and I use inspiration and 
my neighborhood, my friends and family around. My son would always support me. He'd try and help it overcome the injustice of our country. He said to me one day, this injustice is not right. He always said he wanted to put it right. <laughs> he tried so hard. <laughs> Can you give me a little bit more details um, with the loss of your son as to how you come to terms with this? I don't think I'm ever going to come to terms that my son is not here anymore. Months went by with no word from my son. I didn't know how to be. I didn't know how to act. I was still hopeful that my son was alive. I would sit for hours on my prayer mat crying. <laughs> I would slap my cheeks until they were red raw, hoping that the pain would just go away. <laughs> and when you actually did hear of the news, what was that like for you then? running through my head that Saddam had killed my son. I, I didn't want to believe it. I tried to stay positive. It, I have no words. So going back to the character of Umil Bini, as you mentioned, it helped you overcome this tragedy. Could you be a little bit more specific with the reasons and how did this actually help you? She's just so extraordinary. She was able to give away a son, to give away four sons. Honestly, I don't know how she done it. She's inspired me, she's, she's made me strong, and I look up to her every day. She keeps me positive. She gives me life to, to carry on, well, try to carry on living each day. She's incredible. And the way that she achieved this, she just put Allah first. She put him above all else. She's my inspiration and she keeps me going. If it wasn't for Omar Banin, I don't think I'd be here today. So let's just highlight that even through this tragedy, even through the pain, even through the hurt, and even through the constant reminder and memory of the loss of your son, there are times that you have to continue to practice and continue your faith. And an amazing figure like Umal Bini is someone who gives you that daily through reflection and prayer. She's so powerful and so enduring that I'm just so thankful for Umal Bini. And how would you maybe give someone similar strength or advice if they were watching or experiencing loss in their family? If there's someone out there that's experiencing loss, experiencing loss, they shouldn't give up hope of hopefully one day seeing their son or their loved one again. I believe with strength, you can carry on going, to be positive. And don't let 
anyone ruin your life. Well, thank you so much for your insight and your story. As difficult as it is, it is something that a lot of people will actually benefit. And inshallah, I only pray for the increased strength that you have. And thank you so much for being here today. <laughs> What a touching story that was. What a tragedy, an awful, awful story. Yeah, it's that very was, sad because uh, she's one out of a million. There's a lot of ladies who lost their so sons or in Saddam's regime. And um, I'm proud of her that we remember Umm al Banin alayhi salam because it calms us down, you know. Uh, there's this poet once that says, Sayyidi ansat raziyatukum razayana allati salafat wa hawwalat razayatiya. Oh, Master Hussein, your tragedy has came upon uh, before our tragedies. And it makes us uh, feel that, you know, no tragedies like Imam Hussein. So we always remember Imam Hussein alayhi salam. We remember Umm al Banin, we remember Ahl al Bayt, which is something good because what we suffer from is nothing what they suffered from. Uh, but, you know, Saddam's regime was very horrible uh, because the, her son was killed for no reason. I mean, killing, Saddam hated all the Shia Muslims. Yeah. And that is, that has, there's no reason for killing just because you hate Shias. It's just like Hitler who killed all the Jews because they're Jewish or killing all the Christians because they're Christians. Uh, it, it's very horrible. There's no reason for you to kill. So when a mother knows that her son has been martyred for the sake of the religion. It, it doesn't give her a convincing uh, uh, reason. Like even though uh, when she wants to have be patient, she knows he he was martyred for nothing. He was killed and captured and thrown in one grave for nothing. Umm al Bani alayhi salam. She did know that her sons will uh, sacrifice themselves for Imam Hussein because she had a convincing reason. Before Imam Ali proposes to her, she knew that she was going to be blessed with four sons who she was willing to sacrifice them for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So it gives her a convincing reason when she found out that her sons were uh, sacrificed, they were yeah. martyred. She was proud, she was happy. Uh, yes, she did cry. She even wished that she had more sons to sacrifice them for the sake of Hussein. So there was a convincing, reasonable reason behind the martyrdom of her sons. Uh, just like those mothers today um, who uh, lost uh, their sons due to protecting the shrine of Sayyidah Zainab, due to, to, pr to protecting uh, Iraq and uh, again, be standing against Daesh. Many examples, isn't there? Many examples. They become like proud. Like I've heard so many women where they go on TV and they're like, I'm proud that my son became a martyr yeah. because a shaheed, you're a martyrdom. Allah gives you a great role, position uh, in, in Jannah, in paradise. And many mothers, what convinces them and makes them proud? Yes, they do cry, they remember. Um, you can even tell off a mother's face by just looking at her that she has a son who is a martyrdom mm -hmm. because the happiness in that face it, it just goes away yeah um, and it's very it's very like stressing and disappointing to hear how a woman lost her sons and as this woman that we just watched for no reason just because he wanted to walk with the pilgrimage towards Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam and indeed uh, Imam al-Hussein uh, will, will honor him and will honor her as well because he was going to paradise. Hussein is Jannah, is paradise. Yeah. Inshallah, inshallah, indeed. Jannatullah fi ardha, heaven on earth. Um, we mentioned, so she did, she did bring up the beautiful, she always referred back to Umm al Banin, right? Yeah. Um, and she remembered Umm al Banin, and it's no comparison to Umm al Banin, actually, right. um, from losing her son. Is there a practical way when? Do you think there's a practical way? So when we've lost a dear person to us, we did mention it previously, but sometimes when you're kind of in the tragedy, you kind of, 
you lose it, don't you? And yes, it's really yeah. hard to remember and refer back to, for example, Imam Hussein or Sayyidah Ruqi when you've lost um, or Tufla Radhi when you've lost a young child or Sayyidah Ruqi alayhi salam. Many more examples. How is it, how can someone kind of always refer back to them to find this strength in It depends on your faith. So when you have a very uh, strong faith and believe in Allah and uh, this is why we remember Imam Hussein every year. We remember Abdullah al every year. Mm. We remember the martyrdom of Fatimah al-Zahra and her, her Muhsin, the martyrdom as well for being in a miscarriage. Uh, we remember Imam Ali. We remember Ahl al-Bayt yearly. In order for us to have this faith in them and to what they went through because one day we will experience what they have. For example, many mothers have experienced miscarriages. And Fatima Zahra's miscarriage was worse because it was a martyrdom of her Indeed. and her baby. So we remember her due to our strong faith. This is how we have very strong faith in Ahlul Bayt and believe in them. Uh, year after year, it gets stronger and stronger. And when we go and we, we try their posi position, we experience what they experience, um, half of what they experience or s not even Definitely. close to what they experience. We are always remembering them because we do majalis and we remember Ahlul Bayt. So for a mother like losing her sons, she always flashbacks to Ummul Banin because she lost four of her sons. And it's something that one will believe in it and will put it in their faith, you know. So when you experience the loss of a father and you are a daughter, who do you refer to? Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam. When you lose a brother, you remember Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam. And when you listen to what she went through, it will make you forget what you went through. Um, so it, it, it has to do with one person. Some people, they don't remember Ahlul Bayt at all. You know, when they lose uh, a loved one, uh, they would just put Quran and they'd sit down and they'd cry and mourn, for, but nothing calms them down. Uh, I personally have seen myself um, in, in the Fatihat when someone passes away uh, and you go to condolences them on the martyrdom. Uh, one of them was a sister, and the sheikh was reading about Sayyidah Zainab. So he was reading about how she loved her brother and how she lost him, and all those stories about Sayyidah Zainab. When she cries, she's taking it out because she is flashbacking to what she lost, but when she hears Sayyidah Zainab's words, her story, how she lost Imam al Hussein. It's nothing compared to hers, so it helps a lot, Definitely. and it, it uh, like it's good for everyone who has lost a love, loved one, whether it was a brother, a sister, a child, an uncle, uh, to remember Ahlul Bayt's uh, martyrdoms because they experience a lot more. Alayhumussalam, indeed, yeah. they are. We're blessed, aren't we, to yes. have such role models and examples yes, in our lives? Because again, referring back, taking, seeking lessons from them learn from them daily in our daily lives, not just during their martyrdom or their birth anniversaries, but inshallah daily. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sister you're Dua. Welcome. That was ve that was such an insightful knowledge Thank you gave. Thank you, you're welcome. And uh, inshallah, we will, we will see you soon. Inshallah. Thank you, dear viewers, for watching our I Remember Umm al series. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Abbas, 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 Abbas,